This journey began on October 16, 1954. Don Jacob was born at the San Fernando General Hospital. He has one sister and later the family moves to the capital city of Port of Spain. 1963 Growing up in a depressed area with an absent father, the young Don Jacob was single-handedly fighting his own battles on the streets of Port of Spain. Like most people, I used to be beaten and advantaged by, uh, by much older guys and I came from a very small family, just my sister and I, Ruth. And um, you know, you had to learn to fight or to run, one or the two. At nine years old, he met Sensi Clyde Thomas, a mentor who would transform his life forever. Studying judo opened the door to his life vocation. In my first sensei, Sensei Clyde Thomas, and out of all my senses, I would say perhaps he is the most important because there's no second chance for a good first impression. And at nine years old, a very in, uh, impressionable a stage of my life where I was timid, at some stage frightened, my dad weren't there, my mom weren't always there. When I go to the dojo in the evening, I used to be reassured by some of the things that my sensei uh, you know, would, would, would say to the students. And that itself, it, it was good seeds sown in good soil. And, and today we are seeing the results. 1970. While the Black Power movement gained momentum, Don Jacob, at a mere 16 years old, was leading a different struggle against the odds. The place was under a breadfruit tree at 14 Westbury Lane in Belmont, Port of Spain. The cause was encouraging youngsters like himself to channel their warrior instincts in a positive way. Well, uh, my first uh, view of uh, martial arts was one time when Professor Jacob, I was in about third form in Tranquility, and he came with some of his students and they did a demonstration. I mean, that was just what I wanted because I was PBL, yeah, small and lightweight. So people always used to pick on me. And when I saw a professor was training around them guys and things, I said, that is what I need. I had a conflict with my elder brother. And I was telling myself, being influenced by the movies, if I'd known karate, my brother would have beat me up, you know. <laughs> So I went to play with Dragon and I met Professor Jacob, who was a sensei at that time. And Sensei Jacob asked me, so why do you want to learn karate? I said, my brother beat me up. My brother beat me up. And if I know this, I'd be able to take him down and beat him up. And then Professor put me to sit down and told me that karate is not about beating up people. It's about beating up the evil within you. And you need a lot of, lot of discipline. Yeah. Was really in what's called the hell yard, and let me tell you, that was no no uh, nickname or with no weight behind it. Uh. Inside was really when you go to professor say when you reach in Westbury Lane and and you fall on the mat, that's where we say hello, and that's where plenty of people say goodbye. In 1970, Purple Dragon emerged from a 16-year-old with passion and a vision. I live between Belmont and, and, and Laventil. Uh, you know, some people call it the ghetto. I call it home. When you come from a place like, like, like that, that and you're motivated and you're driven by poverty and by hunger and by, by, by embarrassment and, 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 and so on, that's something else. And so when you are driven by that and you, 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 you go onto the floor and you start to work out and you start to do things, you know, this is my future. This is something that will make a difference in my life, that will help me to make a difference in somebody else's life. After earning his black belt in judo under Sensi Clyde Thomas, he studied jiu-jitsu in the United States under the late Grand Master Moses Powell and traditional styles with Master Tui Yushitaka. He now holds a ninth degree black belt and the title Hanshi, Grand Master or Professor, and is an international champion in many divisions. Professor Don Jacob has studied martial arts for over four decades and has developed Don Jitsu Ru. Don Jitsu Ru has a philosophy to it that, 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 that sorts of 
um, is the backbone to what we do, what we think, and how we behave. Donjutsu Ryu was started in Trinidad and Tobago. It's a part of Taekwondo. It is a part of uh, some styles of Jiu-Jitsu. It's a part of wrestling. It's a part of boxing. It's a part of Goju Ryu, Kyoko Shinkai. It's a part of a lot of different styles that people took apart and formed their own style. And Donjutsu really is really bringing back some of those things that we're examining what we're doing now. What people call in MMA or they call in mixed martial arts. And so this, this is what we have been doing for years and years and years. Donjutsu Ryu itself has a different rhythm. It has a different energy and it has been tested by a process of elimination all over the world. So the whole Donjutsu Ryu system is a philosophy as a roadmap that will structure, help structure any positive person's life in such a way that almost as though they're bound to be a success or they're bound to be better now than how they were. Today, Don Jitsu Ru is taught at some 45 dojos spread across Trinidad and Tobago, the Caribbean, North America, the United Kingdom, and Australia. Don Jitsu D, determined to win, or overcome all challenges, and no the crime and drugs, change, just justice, like balance, I, integrity, people must be integrous. None of our exercises are done without a mindset prior to starting. So, so the mindset is what you want to be how you intend to achieve, achieve that, and, and then you put this thing in your mind. And when you start to work, you're working on this thought to be this, not just, well, I want to knock somebody out, I want to win a trophy. I just want to be known, this I want to be, I want, I want, I want. You, you know, this is not the I syndrome as that, it's more like, the I is something that will trigger something inside of me that is sleeping that needs to come alive. For the past 40 years, Purple Dragon International has trained world champions and leading martial arts instructors who have won coveted titles. We want to say thank you to our country. We want to say thank you to all the warriors ever went, the people who help us in whatever way. Because everybody had an important part to play to make all this happen. And without a lot of these guys, maybe we wouldn't be talking here today. Because this is not, the 40 years is not all about Don Jacob. The 40 years is about everybody who who helped the rainbow this whole thing. They've, everybody brought something important. Purple Warriors have traveled the world and continue to leave an indelible mark in the discipline of martial arts. Surrender. 